Hello everyone, at this point you must be thinking of some New Year's resolutions and maybe you might say, oh I want to stop procrastinating, all that precious time I could have saved. Right. Fun fact, I wasted two minutes after writing those two sentences. <laughs> Anyways, we all want to be just a little bit more productive. We start doing something, then get distracted or we lose motivation to do that thing, leading to procrastination galore. So what about me? Well, I'd say I do pro procrastinate a lot, especially during school breaks. I don't even use the typical social media like Facebook and Instagram, but I still spend a lot of time on Reddit, Discord, and YouTube. And even without the computer distractions, I can get distracted by my own hands, like dancing to a song that I'm listening to, or I could just zone out and start like cleaning my comb which is actually kind of satisfying to do, I don't know why. <laughs> I sometimes play like solitaire, which yeah, I, I guess seems a bit weird for a Gen Z to be playing a, a game that much older people play. Well anyways, <laughs> and more. And that's just for what I do in front of my computer. While I'm eating or after I've eaten, I usually will watch something while I'm eating. Which may seem like a bad idea or not, I don't know, whatever. And continue watching after eating because it's easier to watch it when you're not eating, technically. And I spend like an extra 5 to 10 minutes first and then I go and get water. And after I finish drinking the water while I'm still watching it, I'll be continuing to watch it for maybe 10 minutes if it's on YouTube or if it's like a one and a half hour long video, I'll be watching the entire thing, so another 40 minutes more after that. And yeah, that's that's a lot of time to spend <laughs> just watching a video. And you know, apart from stuff like trying to do work or eating my meals or whatever, when I go to do like exercise, the minimum time I suppose I could take is one hour, but it usually extends beyond that because of me getting distracted every minute or so. <laughs> And like literally pausing because my brain just pauses randomly and I start thinking about very random things. And I don't actually use my phone that much, but I'll be distracted nonetheless. So yeah, before you start thinking I have ADHD and, you know, well, I don't know the answer to that. I can't answer that. But, if, you know, before that happens, let me just say that this is probably a lot less the case during the semester, uh, especially the school semester. Though I still have the problem of intent to waste time, it's not really that bad during the school semester. Instead, I'd actually not be able to, you know, watch something else while having lunch. In fact, I'll be looking at my lectures at that point of time sometimes because my lectures happen at a certain timing and I eat lunch a bit late. So, yeah. Anyways, and sometimes even for dinner, I don't really have that much time to literally leisurely watch something because maybe I might have CCA or I I need to do something right after dinner. So yeah, that means that I cannot waste as much time. I don't have the luxury of time to waste it. And I also had this whole thing where I make sure to write down the notes or basically whatever was written on the slides during the lecture itself so that I don't have to do it after the lecture or outside the lecture time. And I did that because I made the call to just attend all the online lectures at the time that they're happening because maybe that is actually a more effective way to do it rather than attempt to watch a recorded lecture because I tend to spend way too much time doing that. Yeah. Anyway, so if if I have like a day with fully lectures, which I did, I did have a day like three, three lectures, I'll be quite tired by the end of the day. And then I'll just waste the rest of the day that I, like, you know, I cannot do work properly <laughs> at that point of time. So, in a way, I still waste time, but it's only during my free time that I waste my time. So, it, and because I have, like, a proper schedule, and I'm doing things during the schedule, that kind of compensates for me not doing things afterwards. Because that stuff is also kind of important for me in order to function and you know, know what's going on. So, uh, so yeah, in other words, a proper schedule maybe makes me more productive, I guess. Or is that really the case? Because as I mentioned, 
like maybe I just feel more productive because I spend so much time listening to online lecture and trying to write down notes at the same time. But at the same time, you could probably think about it in the sense that the lecture itself may be more efficient. It's possible that, you know, it could do the lecture in a shorter period of time. And it's hard to actually calculate the productivity that I experience or, or do in terms of attending the lecture and writing down the stuff at the same time. So instead, I can compare these online lectures with something that I do during the school break as well, which is Coursera. And funnily enough, I actually enjoy doing Coursera. <laughs> or some of my other things like GPO or anything. I just like to go to Coursera and watch videos and, you know, kind of, it's a bit more passive because GPO, I need to think and do things first. Coursera, I can watch the video. More fun, huh? So I end up procrastinating on other things. If I end up, if I start a Coursera course, then I have to finish it first. Otherwise, I'll be doing that instead of doing other things, which is not what I want. And yeah, so what can I learn from all of this? Let me summarize it, I guess, for you. I hope it's not too long. So, so first part, I will tell what exactly causes me to procrastinate, what are the factors. And the first factor is my interest in the activity or topic. And I guess that would explain why I always like doing math tutorials or questions in JC, especially if I didn't want to do something else, then I'll do maths to get me, you know, interested to do more work afterwards. And why I basically took way too long to do the GPO episode, it's still not finished. I'm supposed to finish it and I'm doing this instead. Yeah, this is a lot more interesting to talk about. <laughs> yeah, so that's the first factor. The second factor is the time of the day. So am I a morning person? I mean, it depends on what you mean by morning person because I do have very specific times of the day in which I can effectively do certain things. So if it's something like studying or mental work, I definitely want to do that in the morning. If it's something like physical, then I prefer doing that in the evening. <laughs> so I do have like specific times of the day for which I, I can do certain things. So if I really wanted to get something done after not doing it for really long, like maybe GPO, then I confirm needed to do it first thing in the morning after breakfast because I'm really like the most focused and I have the most motivation at that point of time. As for the afternoon and evening, I can be focused if needed, but I'm more likely to get distracted and waste time, especially after eating dinner. And I'm just like wasting time, maybe because I'm slightly sleepy at that point of time or maybe because I just keep wanting to watch videos. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Anyways. That's the second factor. So the third one is hormones. And yeah, I mean, this is not in order of significance. I just typed it in order of stuff that came to my head. But yeah, this is not a joke. This is legit. I think um, for me personally, I feel more productive when I have my time of the month. I don't have to explain that, do I? But technically, the hormones do affect whether you're productive or not, I suppose. I do not have... I didn't bother checking for a scientific explanation whether this is correct or not, but for me personally, it seems to be the case. But having exams at that time seems to be both a good thing and a bad thing if I end up being in pain. Yeah, great. Okay, so, and the fourth factor, which is probably linked to hormones as well, to some extent, is emotions. If I have any to begin with. <laughs> yeah, so if I'm in a good mood, or if I'm maybe kind of angry or a bit like, you know, want to to pent away my energy then it might motivate me to do something without distraction but at the same time i could get distracted by a certain emotion if let's say i'm like really upset about something or something like that which doesn't really happen all that much honestly but if i do have a very strong emotion then it's hard for me to do certain things so those two are probably linked, I guess. Hmm. Anyway, so the fifth factor is the frequency of doing something. If I create some, some challenge and tell myself to do something every day, with the first day I'm good, I'm literally following it very well. Maybe the second day, but by the third day, I'm just like, no. <laughs> just immediately have no self-control and goes back to doing, being distracted, I guess. <laughs> I think it's a bit similar to how people try to follow a diet and then they give up after the first day. <laughs> That's basically the energy that you get from this point. 
Um, but this is not, but for me, instead of that, it's more of like me trying not to waste time. That's a completely different thing. Hmm. Anyway, so I've come to realize I work best in breaks when I, you know, in breaks in between doing things. So this is especially the case in terms of practicing something or even doing something like exercise. So what I mean is in CCA, sometimes I, I go to CCA multiple times in a week and we are supposed to like repeat the same thing again and again. And sometimes if the CCA happens too many times in a week, by the end of the week, I'm just like not able to do certain things again and again and again and I need a break. Or within the same practice itself, if we are doing like one, one particular let's say either music or dance or anything, if I'm doing that thing multiple times, after a while I cannot function. <laughs> I need a break before I can do the thing properly again. Which is kind of interesting to say the least, but I seem to work like that. And if let's say if I'm doing exercise, which is not something that really requires practice per se, it's more like I can do the first and second day, and I can do it on the third day as well. It's just that I'll be more likely to waste time and be a little bit more... Uh, unmotivated in a sense, yeah. But at the same time, I can do it continuously because it's not that intense in the first place. So, yeah. Hmm. Anyways, <laughs> so that's the that's the fifth factor. So the sixth one is maybe noise and sounds? Question mark. Well, surprisingly, I can work well with loud noise. Actually, not very loud, but just generally noisy backgrounds or like chitter chatter in the distance that I cannot understand or hear. Like I just barely hear like the noises or the speak people chattering in the background, that kind of thing. I can still work in that environment. And I do listen to music sometimes if I want to do something, like writing the script that I wrote for this. You know, a music if I listen to music, it's easier for me to do the thing. Sometimes I won't do it otherwise. <laughs> But at the same time, there are some cases in which I absolutely cannot listen to music. For example, when reading notes or basically reading something that I really need to focus and read because otherwise I will not do that <laughs> properly. I will just be like half read it and then I need to re read it again just to focus and read it. So, you know, just to make things better, I should not listen to music while doing that. Yeah, so or sometimes when I'm trying to do some particular tutorial or questions and it's a little bit more thinking required, I don't want to get distracted by the songs because I can actually, I can kind of hear the lyrics of the songs and stuff and I don't want to actually accidentally like input that into my tutorial. <laughs> yeah, but there is one kind of song that will annoy the world out of me, <laughs> which, which are basically high frequency noises. I think everyone can agree with that. I'm the most sensitive to those and they can sometimes create tinnitus and I don't want and I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. So that's for factor six. So that's, uh, the seventh factor is milestones per se, you know, I uh, didn't for lack like of a better word. And in fact, if this is actually an example of how this happens, after writing the sixth factor, I went and read Cora, and I did that for 15 minutes, and then I came back to do number seven. <laughs> so sometimes a task will come, you know, in a sense that you will spend some time doing the task, and then you want a break naturally because you feel a bit like you just want a break in between, or like at certain points, like milestones, or certain parts of the task, you want to take a break. The break could be a short five minutes if you have self-control or it can be 15 minutes if you don't have self-control at least it could even be 30 minutes for all that much and sometimes I don't even feel like continuing and I end up doing it two days later so yeah so you might be wondering what do I do in between those two days well that's factor eight doing another activity sometimes I feel like doing something else either another task or if I'm supposed to eat fruit or something Actually, yeah, for the most part, I don't feel like eating things, but, you know, this is important, right? <laughs> so if I'm eating something or like, you know, doing that sort of thing, I tend to waste more time and I actually take to eat the food. I'll be watching video after that or I'll be just looking at Discord or Reddit after that, basically. Or if you're talking about another task in general, let's say I need to do A first, but I feel like doing B. 
Then I end up just taking the whole day to do B. I take the morning and the afternoon to do it. And of course, I don't, you know, do stuff in the evening. I tend to waste my time. And I end up not doing A at all. And that's not what I wanted because A was more important. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so that's that's the eight factor. I think that's as much as I could come up with. So I'm guessing at least some of these factors might affect your procrastination habits too. And, um, you know, if there's other things that I haven't mentioned, please do go ahead and take note of those as well. So how do we minimize procrastination, which is the important thing to do, right? So the first part is to identify what makes it happen, which is what we've just done right now. So the second step is to then seek ways to minimize those causes. And I think that's pretty obvious, like, I mean, for some of them at least, if let's say your cause of procrastination is, you know, getting distracted by Discord or Reddit, then the way to minimize it is to not go there as often. So the third step is to come up with actionable specific plans. Yes, this is important. Don't just end your resolution with, oh, I want to stop procrastination. Or like, you know, I don't want to procrastinate anymore. <laughs> Instead, you must have a more specific plan, like for, you know, example, what I mentioned just now, I don't want to keep going to Reddit or Discord. Then I can say, oh, I limit it to visiting Reddit to three times per day, and each time I only see it for five minutes, which I think is a bit hard to do also, but, you know, at least it's more specific. So having numbers and specific activities written in your plan will make it easier to both execute your resolution and gauge if it's successful. And if you want more details on this, you can look at the first New Year's video that I made, which was for the 2020. And now it's going to be 2022. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And the fourth step is, of course, to stick to your plans. And if you cannot stick to your plans, you have troubles doing it, then figure out why and then adjust the plans if necessary. Sometimes if you just go from step from zero to hundred right away, it's not easy to follow it. So instead you can go up a ramp, like a gradual approach, maybe do one thing at a time. You know, for a few days you do enact one um, action at a time and then eventually you can reach the hundred. And the fifth step is to believe in yourself and make sure that you feel good while doing your plan. Don't torture yourself in the process, but don't let yourself off too easy either. So what this means is, um, okay, like as I mentioned this, I will then segue to the ending. <laughs> Basically what this means is, is if you, you know, you're too hard on yourself, you, you say no Reddit or no Discord, or for example, uh, let's say, but you, you end up getting so stressed out after the first day that you just cannot do anything, then that's not what we want to do, right? We instead want to minimize procrastination. Actually, even the resolution of stopping procrastination may not be a good resolution. Instead, you must look at minimizing it rather than completely trying to eradicate it. Because sometimes procrastination might actually be good. You know, if let's say sometimes when I'm doing my so-called exercise and I'm like just sitting down there and zoning out, <laughs> you know, it's kind of nice and peaceful. Honestly, it feels so quiet. That's why I end up doing that. <laughs> Not because of any other reason. And there was one time my dad came and then told me, Oh, are you meditating? <laughs> and I was just like, Oh, that's actually an interesting way to look at it. So in a way, sometimes you do need to have some time to waste. You know, if you cannot like expect yourself to be productive all the time. And sometimes even pro like procrastinating can lead to a better outcome. Sometimes people can do a really good job at the last minute. But this is really... It's, this is a bit risky, but you know, it happens sometimes. Or uh, for this video per se, I actually did this uh, audio, like I recorded a different script. It's, it's not the same thing that I'm doing now, it's a different script. And it was a lot more unhinged and more like, oh, look at me, I procrastinate so much. It isn't as useful as the video as this particular script is, which is me actually giving you advice on how to not procrastinate. So me procrastinating on this particular video made it such that I could make it into a New Year's video and make it better. I hope. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes procrastination is not necessarily a bad thing, but you must be aware of when you're doing it and be aware of whether it is, you know, negatively impacting your life. If it is, then you must remove that particular negative impact. 
yeah. If it's not, and you're not actually procrastinating all that much, then go ahead. It, you know, sometimes a little fun is better than, you know, it, it's not, it's not a big deal, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if, if you found this video useful, because maybe you do want to reduce your procrastination, then I would say do not procrastinate with pressing the like button, like button and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, then why are you procrastinating? Please do it now. <laughs> and with that, I would like to say thank you, happy new year, and you know stay, you know stay safe. Hope that COVID doesn't keep procrastinating and disappears for goodness' sake. Yeah, for like this disappears and goes away soon. <laughs> Yeah, actually, in a way, it's kind of like COVID is also procrastinating. Yeah. Oh.